anybody, can you guys see me? Pardon me? I said, can you see me? I just came in. Who, uh, well, that, I guess that depends on who me is. Richard. Well, Richard, you were there a minute ago and then you went away. Yeah, Richard, I, we can't see your video. There's Bill's video. I see Scott. Richard, all we have is your name. All right, so so I, what do I do? I'm a lousy, I'm not a, a frequent Zoom uh, Zoomer. Enable the lower I'm, I'm a baby lower boomer. Left, <laughs> lower left hand corner, it should say start video. Left hand corner. Lower bottom left hand corner. <laughs> oh, bottom. There you go. oh, yeah, all right, I got it. I got well, that, it. That's Thanks something for else. That bottom. There, oh, there I am. All right, geez, I've gotten and older. How is Scott doing? <laughs> doing all right. I don't see. know. Yeah. You chased the guy next to you. Well, he came back. All right. <laughs> so Dave Burgess, we understand, is on the road. So uh, we're going to have audio only from him. <clears throat> and I see someone uh, up. Oh, pace, pace. How do? Howdy. Nice to see you. Okay, you guys are drinking beers and such, so I'll be right back. Yeah, <laughs> mine's dope. <laughs> Some champions. Rum. Uh, I've got that, but I'm not going to. <laughs> okay. It's that, it, well, it's the, one of the advantages of not being at the guild for the meetings. Well, yeah. So, uh, Greg, when Scott gets back, you've got a, a kind of an agenda and stuff, right? Do. The first thing on the agenda is uh, we need to uh, just introduce ourselves. We've got a couple people uh, tonight that uh, have not been here for a while. So uh, why don't we go ahead and start? Uh, I'll just go down uh, the pictures on my screen. Uh, Tracy is the first one. Can you... Uh, Tell us a little bit about what you do and uh, you know your machine and so forth. Okay, well, I have a uh, Pacific Tooling, uh, which is a Roger Webb, whatever it is, Chinese machine. And it's uh, 6012, um, so 600 by 1200 uh, CNC, uh, water cooled. Um, been doing this for about, uh, what, about five years, I guess. And uh, uh, I'm using Vectric Pro, and uh, I got Mach 3. OK. And Thank you very much. My specialty is artwork. And she does an awesome job of uh, carving that, uh, sometimes many days worth of carving. <laughs> <laughs> so OK, uh, next, uh, why don't we have uh, uh, why don't we have you go ahead, uh, Rich? Uh, okay. Uh, well, my name is uh, Rich Masalis. I, I have not been here in, in a long time, maybe even a year. Um, but uh, I live out here in uh, boring Oregon. Uh, that's a noun, not an adjective. And um, <laughs> I, I have my own shop. I, it's separate from, um, I have my own building, uh, which is on the same property that I have a house. And so I have a pretty generous shop. It's taken, what, 40 years to get to this point. <laughs> so I've been through many shops in my life. So, and I have, a, uh, I have a legacy Gemini, and that's a four by eight bed uh, with turning centers, you know, and about an 11 horsepower spindle. Oh. I've had it about four or five years now. And I do, I do whatever, I mean, a, a little of this, a little of that. Mostly the most recent big thing I did was um, I built a suspended vanity for our, our bathroom. We did a big renovation of the bedroom bathroom master uh, complex. And I decided that, that I would, since I had the CNC, I would try and build a vanity and, and it worked. It, it came out great. <laughs> it's, it's cherry veneered. It's suspended underneath a sort of a, um, uh, a cement type, you know, molded, um, uh, pair of double sink or double sink counter uh, has uh, three rows of drawers, two sets of drawer, uh, cabinet doors under the sinks, um, and uh, took a year. And I had the help of Vince, uh, who who actually uh, 
ended up creating the uh, the files for me. I gave him the design. He created the the files, and and I used Aspire. Uh -huh. Okay. And then I make other little things for the shop. So what I had most re so Craig, I send you a picture of the uh, the the router bit holders or trays. Yes, I did. I saw yeah. that. That was uh, that was something. If you got a copy of that, maybe on our show and tell, you could. Uh, show and uh yeah we'll have to figure out how to show it uh if you mean by <laughs> show a picture yes basically it's uh share the screen so, okay share the screen onward uh scott why don't you uh tell us about what you've been doing and uh your right. machine and so forth uh what do i have uh, i've got an avid 4848 um that I've modified <clears throat> with an, with a CNC Depot uh, auto tool changing spindle. And um, <clears throat> I also have a little 3040 Chinese machine from a company called Omeo CNC. And I appreciate them a lot because they've given me an opportunity to heavily modify a machine to make it work. But uh, <laughs> no, this, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not terrible. But, Good uh, news, bad news. <laughs> Well, as far as Chinese CNCs go, it's pretty good. It's pretty good hardware and everything, but it it came with um, uh, the electronics were just not very good. So I replaced those and I upgraded it to Mach 4, which is my preferred controller. Um, and uh, I actually moved to Mach 4 so that I could do the, so I could more easily do the conversion of my Avid to ATC. And now that I've had the experience of programming Mach 4, I just love it. It's fantastic. Um, so what have I been doing? Well, I've uh, spent a few years making dice boxes for a Kickstarter and beyond that I, that I got myself into, and that proved to be very educational. And, um, uh, <clears throat> and that's now over. I still have boxes that I'm making, but the Kickstarter and the, the fulfillment is over. And so my latest thing has been, uh, dabbling in rotary 3d stuff, uh, which I love. It's really, it's incredible. Like the, you know, Tracy, I've always looked at your stuff and thought, oh, 3D, that's cool. Maybe I'll look at that one day, but now I'm hooked. Um, and um, so that's a lot of fun. I've been making these pens and I might do another Kickstarter with them. We'll see. We'll see what happens. And uh, other than that, I think for me, I've been a woodworker for a long time. But when I got my CNC and I started dabbling in that now really extensively spend my time in that, I realized I'm not a woodworker. I'm a person who enjoys process automation and finding ways to get machines to do it for you. So. Yeah, so that's me. Great. Is that part of your profession too, Scott? Uh, well, up until a few years ago, I was a consultant doing uh, research administration software and, and uh, business improvement. And uh, <clears throat> I, I left three years ago to try and make a go of it, to try and turn this into a business. And I've had some success, but it's, it's a struggle to actually make money and actually build things because building things is what i'm passionate about but if you're taking the time to, if you're the one making the thing um it's very hard to actually make money at it because you really got to be getting other people to make the thing for you right right not as much fun no yeah on the other hand i do like to make it once design it make it once and then get someone else to make it a hundred more times for me so maybe there is something there <laughs> I've heard Dave Smith sing that very same song. Dave, we got to talk. I need to, I need some advice. <laughs> we'll talk. You're on mute, Craig. You're, you're muted, Craig. Somebody One of the things Craig. we're going to talk about is uh, is the CNC uh, project at the Guild and <laughs> the program. And once we get that started, get it going, uh, we may find that there are a, maybe a number of people in the guild who are interested in taking your design or some kind of design and making 300 or whatever. So, you know, that's, uh, that's a possibility, something that we certainly, uh, as we get going on this whole program at the guild, Maybe that's something that uh, that we will uh, we will do. Uh, Dave Smith also has a uh, a, a little project that uh, he was involved with down in Texas that he's going to talk about a little bit, and that was one that was a good money maker for their organization. Anyway, okay, uh, Bill, 
Cogswell, can you uh, tell us a little about yourself, please? Hi, <clears throat> I'm Bill Cogswell here up um, in Olympia. Um, I have a Shapeoko Pro um, CNC. I've had it for about a year. I've always just been kind of dabbling in it. Um, I use their program, which is Carbide Create, which is um, actually, I mean, I don't have a lot to compare it to, but it seems to work for the kind of things I do and they, they are making good improvements to it. But I think, you know, down the road for me, it's maybe Fusion 360 or something. I just don't know yet. But um, part of it is, part of that, <clears throat> learning that is why I want to be in a group like this to get other people's experience and collect that so that um, I can see what what's up with all of that. So there really aren't a lot of people around that have this kind of experience. So it's nice to find a group of uh, like-minded folks. And that's why, I'm, that's why I'm here. I was in this group, um, maybe attended four or five meetings a year ago and things got busy and um, I got the letter again, and I thought, well, you know, let's get back into it and see what's going on. So I'm glad to be here. Cool. <clears throat> Great. Thank you. Uh, well, there's uh, a number of people within our, our, little, our little group that mm -hmm. have a variety of experience with a various, with variety of different uh, CNC uh, design and also the, uh, the CAM, the uh, machining. So, you know, we, we might want to mention what programs we use as we're talking and uh, you know, give an opportunity for people to uh, get together offline and talk about needs and so forth. Uh, Mr. Smith, could you uh, introduce yourself and uh, just tell us a little bit about yourself, please? Yeah, um, I'm Dave Smith, been doing CNC work since 2010, um, all well known at all. I started out with a toy called Shark. Um, and actually they're a lot better now, but that got me going. And then I, then I went to one of these wood shows and stumbled upon the legacy system. And I was in love, lust maybe. So had a couple of, of uh, the legacy systems uh, running uh, Mach 3. Uh, I use Aspire for my all of my work. Um, started out building just about anything anybody wanted. I, you know, when I retired from my first career in 2010, it was um, take my coffee, go into the shop and build something and decided I'd put up a little website and find out what's going on and became a whole second career. And what has emerged is game boards. I mean, Furniture, yeah, cabinets, yeah, I did all that. But at my age, you don't want to schlep a bunch of bookcases around. So I pretty much settled on game boards and it, I could do as much business as I wanted in that. It's just crazy. So, but I like, I, as we said before, I, I prefer to do the, the one-off kinds of things. And the more unique, the better. Um, I've had requests for a hundred of this or a hundred of that. And fundamentally to turn it down, I couldn't do the production. So if I ever get one of those again, hopefully uh, one of our SIG members would be thrilled to do production work and they can have it. So basically that. Thank you. Well, a lot easier to install game boards than it is uh, kitchen cabinets, I think. Yeah, you put them um, in a box and ship them off, you know. <laughs> yeah, so, okay, uh, Pace. You want to tell us uh, what you are doing these days? Yeah, I, uh, I'm Pace. I live in Southeast Portland. Um, I have a Avid four by six machine. That I guess I've had probably for <clears throat> four or five years now. Uh, I use that with uh, Fusion 360, do all my design and cam and that. Um, I primarily work with sheet goods, um, a lot of plastics. I have a side business making um, accessories for bicycles. So most of that is um, uh, marine board plastic. 
and then I uh, I also will do um, kind of custom flat pack type uh, Baltic birch plywood uh, projects for people, mostly people in the bike industry, which is what my day job is. Um, <clears throat> and then along those lines, I've also uh, recently, well, I guess about uh, a year and a half now, had a have a have a small Chinese laser that I use for some of the some of the uh, uh, thinner plywood stuff. So you have a four by six, you said? Yeah. Yeah, it was a it was a two by uh, four by two that I uh, expanded to. Um, so that says no matter what size multi birch you start with, you have to slip an end off before you can use it. Huh? Well, I've got it set up so that I is I, my shop is in the basement of my house and it's just enough room that I can overhang uh, two feet on the in feed or two feet on the two feet on the out feed. So okay. Uh, it's rare that I put an entire sheet up and just start uh, cutting parts. I almost always cut things down to uh, uh, smaller blanks. I don't quite trust my machine to let it run for two weeks like Tracy. So, <laughs> hey, I'm I'm there when it's running. Wow. Do you feel? Do you ever feel trapped, Tracy? What? what? Do you ever feel trapped by your machine? You really want to go like to the kitchen and get something to eat, but you just can't leave? Well, yeah. Well, hey, I can I can mm -hmm. walk out for you know a couple minutes, but yeah, I have to go back right away. So I'm not totally trapped. But it is in a separate building. So hey, Stu, uh, I, hey, Stu, I remember meeting you at uh, the small model engineering event in Southeast Portland a month or so ago. No, no, I didn't know about that. So I guess ah. it wasn't me. Okay, so I, I ride bikes. What kind of things do you make? Well, uh, I primarily um, uh, accessories for uh, cargo bikes. So um, basically helping people carry their kids on the back of long tail cargo bikes. Very cool. Um, during the pandemic, I tapped into the to the rad power bikes, which is like the the big direct to consumer e-bike brand and um, and they left a lot of holes in their accessory offering which just was perfect for me to come in and and uh, and and uh, sort of fill the voids they left so yeah very cool hope to hear more rich bader why don't you go ahead and uh, tell us a little about you Okay. Um, uh, hi, I'm a new woodworker. Um, I joined the guild about a year ago. Uh, and the idea that I had was I wanted to make a Japanese joinery on a CNC machine. Um, rather ambitious, but what the hell. Uh, and a week ago, I <laughs> finally got my machine up and running. I had a little bit of help from Craig and Dave Smith and uh, Vince of, as well, and uh, my spoil boards cut, and I've currently got a project sitting on the machine. So um, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. And uh, I've taken some of the guild courses. The guild has been very helpful. I've taken hand carving classes and Kumiko classes and all kinds of stuff other than CNC, but the guild has just been a fabulous resource. Very helpful folks. Uh, the classes have been great. And uh, so um, I'm kind of involved. Good. Oh, uh, and I've got, uh, oh, so what kind of machine do I have? I've got an Avid. Uh, it's a two by two, a so-called bench top machine. Um, I ordered it with a stand, a base, because I wanted the ability to do vertical work holding on it. And you couldn't do that if it was sitting on a bench top. Uh, so I've got ideas about how I'm going to implement that. And I use uh, Centroid Acorn as my controller, and it comes with its own CAM software. <clears throat> so I got to do the systems integration of the stepper controller and the drivers and the computer and the blah, 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 and the thingamabobs. And uh, that was a, a satisfying project. It wasn't too challenging. And so far, it's been up and running and reliable. So I've been, I've been pleased with what I've got. And I, and I just uh, today I 
Uh, I stared at the screen for about 30 seconds, but finally pushed the button and upgraded from uh, V-Carve to Aspire. Because uh, I'm, I'm doing some 3D stuff also. Great. Well, did, your, uh, did you feel a little shock in your uh, pocketbook? Uh, I, I, I did, and I, I, I made the mistake of mentioning it to my wife, and I, I won't, I won't oh, do that again. Uh, that's, uh, that's quite an upgrade. Uh, so if you enjoy doing 3D modeling and uh, creating the 3D models, that's uh, a good way to do it. There's several, but uh, yep. that's a good yep. one. Yep, I've I've played a little bit with SketchUp, but the Spire was the. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about the project that I've taken on in a little while. Uh, okay. But but Aspire was the tool that seemed to make it go. So, great. Uh, I, I paid my monies, and we'll see what happens. Yeah. Uh, Vince, why don't you tell us about uh, what you are doing with uh, CNC? Unmute. Okay, um, I've had a Maverick 3x5 for nearly two years now. I use it more and more for almost every kind of project from small parts for uh, clients to um, cabinets to I've just finished a project with bookcases and I'll talk about that a little more later. And um, yeah, so put together a little training class on operations and safety um, for the CNC project and uh, ran that with uh, Rich and my grandson. And I'm going to ask you to talk more about that later. Yeah, that went well. Um, yeah, so planning a couple, some other courses and um, yeah, one thing I enjoy doing with the uh, CNC is curved solid wood edging on elliptical tables and things like that that you can do by hand, but it's a, a lot more fuss and a lot more work. Um, and one thing that I really enjoy is using the extension to SketchUp called um, Cabinet Sense. And I use it for real cabinets and I use it for things that don't look like cabinets. Um, uh, video um, uh, bases, um, bookshelves, um, anyway. And I've got it so that it will automatically generate the uh, DXF files and pour it into vCarve and generate the uh, tool paths and lay them out on the sheets and all that. So that's fun. Uh, yeah, so we'll talk about some other things later. Okay, you're going to talk about Great. your gadget later too? Uh, yeah, oh, we're going to make him talk about uh, the gadget. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do some dovetails and I uh, uh, didn't find any decent software for doing it, so I wrote my own. It's an extension to VCarve and Aspire, and I found it works quite well. Um, I've got it available on my website that's had a few sales, um, hopefully more in the future. Mm -hmm. Great. Great. Thank you. Uh, Dave Burgess. What's your, wait, what's your website, Vince? Vince, what was your website? Vince, are you hearing that? I was now. I'm hearing it, but I'm I'm not sure he's responding. Yeah, Vince. The question is, what's what's your website? Where do we get that gadget? Yeah, it's CorbinWoodworks.com. C o r b i n Woodworks.com. Oh, I would definitely want to check it out. That sounds really cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I've, I've um, used it a bit. And it, it really, it, it works well. And I'm sure that uh, we'll hear more about that from Vince, uh, some of the different types of dovetails that can be done with that. So, 
Uh, Dave Burgess, if you could uh, maybe just tell us a little, a little bit about uh, you know your uh, interest, and we'll be talking a little later, and I'm pr pretty sure that uh, you may be part of that discussion. Yes, that's that's part of why I dialed in today. Um, I do not own a uh, CNC, uh, but I do work in the high tech industry. I actually have done embedded systems programming and. Uh, I work for Tektronix designing oscilloscopes now. So, um, but I've always had an interest in uh, robotics. So uh, this is this sort of dovetails well with that. Um, so I'm here to do the, to learn more about that as well as I am a uh, SA for the guild and I'd like to become one of the SAs that uh, are certified or qualified to uh, allow people to use the guild's CNC when it gets set up. Great. Well, um, we'll be, well, <laughs> pretty quick, we will be talking about uh, the CNC project that we've got going on at the Guild. And, uh, you know, certainly uh, having qualified uh, shop attendants that know a bit about uh, CNC will be a, a big help to, to get that going. Uh, you know, we'll, we will, the, the uh, four of us who are kind of putting together the program, uh, we will definitely be talking to you uh, about several of the issues that you just brought up in an email. Yeah. Uh, I think it was just today. Mm -hmm. So we'll be yep. uh, trying to address those uh, concerns. So yes, anyway. I, I, I have had the opportunity. And I'm also a member of the safety committee. So I've had a chance yeah. to at least get a preview of the, of the class. Yeah, so right. a lot of a uh, lot of things going on. A lot of things that we're going to be uh, are are putting into the mix. <laughs> so uh, you know, a lot of details to be ironed out yet. Yep. Okay. Yep. I'm going to go back to mute since I'm uh, driving through uh, around the Bay Area right now. <laughs> okay. I, I'm sure it's noisy there. Well, I'm trying. I don't want you guys to have to listen to the car. Or the gunshots or any of the cursing that goes on back and forth. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, tonight, uh, one of the things we are going to be talking about, uh, well, we want to do kind of a show and tell. And uh, one of the things that I think would be good is uh, if you have something to show, uh, it would be fun to talk about uh, one of the things that I'm kind of interested in uh, presenting to some of the Woodworkers Guild people and, and uh, people who are traditionally not uh, automated or, or not CNC type people who may not have an interest in uh, using the CNC to build their projects, but maybe to just enhance them. So a box that you make you know, with traditional woodworking and then how to enhance it with the CNC. So uh, why don't we go through that uh, and take a, a few minutes and then we'll go ahead and get on with our, uh, the couple pieces to our, uh, our agenda for tonight. Uh, I would like to just have whoever just kind of jump in and, uh, and show off your projects. You want me to go ahead and start? Sure. Yeah. Okay, let's, come on, where are you? Oh. Okay, I just brought up a couple things because Rich wasn't here last month. So um, I showed my material at uh, the uh, Gathering of the Guilds. And uh, so this was some of the projects that I have done, not, not the intarsia back there, but on this table, I have a collection of owls. Uh, this is a sharpening station, um, which I thought was interesting. Uh, Tracy, of... Anna, all, all we see are the thumbnails of the images. We don't see the full image. Can you see it now or? Not yet. 
Hmm. Uh, we see your file explorer with the images in it, but we don't see the images themselves. Okay, hang on. Let's see how you do that. You need to share everything on your screen. Yeah. Or, or at least the, the photo app. Okay, so now let's see if I can do it this way. Uh, it's kind of way at the end. Way at the end? If you click that up arrow and share screen, it'll let you share. Just, I did, uh, and then I picked out the, my one file folder. Um, oh, maybe this will do it. Yeah, that won't show the pictures. Is, now do you see There it? you go. There there you go. go. Now we're talking. We'll see if it'll let me go uh, to more than just this one. Okay, so this is what I had at, at the uh, gathering of the guilds. Um, so it just, like I say, a collection of owls, um, eagles. I love that's Mount St. Helens right there. And one of my clocks, that's an eagle clock. Um, Craig, you talked about enhancing projects. Uh, back here is a, uh, unfortunately, I, I don't have a better picture here. I'd have to go and dig for it. Uh, this uh, chessboard and box that I made, I turned around and in the front and all the sides are all bee carved in scroll work. So it, it's, uh, so I added that enhancement uh, uh, to the box. You just, unfortunately, you can't see it uh, with the lid down and everything else. Um, but uh, so now let's see if I can go to the next picture. Is that not going to let me do that? Um, let's see. Oh, there we go. Can you see that one now? Yeah. Yes. OK, so that is, uh, I just completed this. Uh, and um, you can't tell, but on this lower side, this is about an inch and a quarter thick. Whereas it tapers down and at this part of the seam to give you some depth, that's only a half inch thick. Um, but I really tried to define this thing as best I could. So there's a fisherman in a boat uh, and, and so on. This was cut out of uh, African mahogany. Um, and I wasn't pleased with the finish uh, because about halfway through the project, the wood started to cup a little bit. Oh, yeah. And uh, that's from having a very thick piece of wood. And as you're carving it, and it's taking several days, uh, humidity wow. and everything else. So I dampened it and put weight on it and everything else. I took about a 16th of an inch out of the warp, but it still got uh, about 3 eighths of an inch cupping in it. So, but it still, it hangs fine. And it's a project of something that I'm giving away to someone. So it's, it's fine. But now I'm trying to figure out how I can prevent this in future use of that wood because I bought a 10 foot board for almost well, 190 bucks. Huh? So, um, so I, gotta, I gotta think about that one, how best to do this. Yep. So is the is the problem that it cups while you're seeing seeing or the, the problem that it cups after? No, while I'm seeing seeing. So I've dealt with that just by um, gluing or double sided taping even sometimes um, or having a piece that's larger than your finished piece and screwing it into uh, plywood or MDF. Well, that's fine, but then it's still going to turn around and cup once I undo it. Yeah, that's true. Well, then you can do what I did with my boxes, which is to embed a sheet of eighth inch thick uh, 6061 aluminum into it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It works. It works. <laughs> uh, so uh, now let's. Uh, Tracy, do... what, 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 how do you start your designs? Where, where does that, where do those images come from? Uh, I go to, um, I do a lot with Etsy. And I will go and put down, uh, depending on what I'm looking for, but 3D model uh, STL, because uh, I'm looking for an STL file. Uh -huh. um, 
if I go in SVG, that's strictly a, ve a vector file, you know, and I'm yeah. not, I'm looking for three dimensional, so I want the STL, and then I can import that right in. And those files are normally pretty inexpensive. I can get them anywhere from, uh, you know, three, four dollars all the way up to twenty-five dollars, depending on what it is and how elaborate it is. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll go to the design and make a vectric site and buy something. Um, but I buy my artwork, so uh -huh. that's why I don't need Aspire. Uh, I yes. couldn't just. I could buy a heck of a lot of artwork. And instead of spending the extra fourteen hundred dollars, so right, right. Uh, and, and, anyway. and do you create the composition out of multiple pieces of clip art? It depends on what I'm doing. Sometimes I do, yes. Ah, uh, okay. Um, <coughs> here's a clock that I made. I showed this last month, but here's a clock that I did. Uh, that was a beautiful. Um, 51 millimeter thick piece of uh, black walnut. And uh, uh, that took quite a bit. I went through a uh, my tapered ball nose. It was a, uh, a 1 uh, But because of the deep plunges that it had to go through, it just it didn't matter. It, it, it burnt that thing up, but I got the project done. So <laughs> it, it was worth it. So, uh, uh, but uh, so that one is fine. Now let's go to the next one that's in this series. Uh, now I did a charcuterie board with my daughter. And so um, I carved all this in with uh, a V carp and uh, we had to make several different cuts because we didn't want to mix colors. So we, I carved the branches, we filled it all in, sanded it all out. I did this with my daughter, um, turned around and in, did the flowers. And uh, this was a two-sided board that she wanted. So uh, we flipped it over and wow. did this one. Wow. I really wow. like this one. Now she hand carved the river because this particular board already had, I'm not sure the correct word, checking, cupping. It was, it was anyway, it was all tearing out. So she used her little uh, chisel and carved the river out. We filled all that. I sanded it down and then I carved the branches in. We filled that in with epoxy. Uh, then we did the flowers and filled all that in with epoxy and sanded it all down. So, as I said, this is the same board. It's double sided. Yeah. So um, I, I was really pleased with, with uh, what she was able to do and what I did, you know, together with her. And uh, so let's the, the, the flowers is, is resin poor also. Oh, all of it's resin poor, but uh, now here, here I'll just show you this, and and you can't see this. This is a blue with a pearl in it. Okay. Uh -huh. The other ones she painted. After I did the V carb, she painted the pink in there and everything else, all the enhancement. Uh -huh. And we used clear epoxy with uh -huh. just a hint of pearl in it. So, uh, so it's a combination of her. Yeah, uh, her artistry because she does likes to paint, but I carved the with you know with my machine I v carved it all in, so uh, so I thought that was kind of a, a neat little thing to do you know very cool you know that sort of thing you'd go into an art gallery and see that you'd, you'd pay hundreds of dollars for that oh well a gorgeous piece yeah and, and she's gotten some more wood she's got some things that she wants to hand carve. Um, so I've gotten her some accessories to help her do that. And then I will add any touches that she wants me to do as far as, uh, doing any other branches or anything else. Um, right now, and she had to take on a second job because uh, you know how things are in today's world, but, uh, uh, she's got a, how big is that thing? It's bigger than my table. So it's about four by, well, actually it's, it's about a two by four uh, big 
thick, uh, you can't, I, well, I don't know if you can see my hand, but thick piece of black walnut um, with live edges that uh, she's supposed to be doing a coffee table for her office. Wow. And uh, we've already done uh, a couple pours. I'm supposed to carve some bow ties in it uh, because of some cracks that we want to make look really neat. Um, but the problem with it is that she just won't let me do things. And she's she's only has a few days that she can get off between the two jobs to, to work on anything. And uh, so and she she wants to be there when I do it. So uh, what what can I say, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, so anyway, so I will stop sharing there and uh, let someone else take the floor. Thanks, Tracy. Very cool work. Very cool. Mm -hmm. uh, Scott, Scott, could <coughs> you show, can you show us a, a picture or something on your the boxes, your dice boxes? If they are beautiful, it. by the way. Yeah. I know. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I have a, uh, yeah, I probably could do that pretty easily. I can just do an Instagram thing. Um, and you should all follow me on Instagram. <laughs> uh, okay, let me share. Okay, you should be just looking at my uh, my browser. We are. Uh -huh. yeah. So these are, um, uh, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know. What, I don't even know what to share with the boxes anymore. These are like boxes three years ago and uh, they were just a solid piece of wood and um, uh, just a eight quarter. And then I couldn't get eight quarter because I, I mean, I was such a noob when it came to actually understanding production. Production is not about the design. It's about the ability to make it repeatedly with different species of wood, being able to source material. I, you know, I, and I learned all that stuff the hard way. Um, and uh, so here in the beginning, I thought, okay, I'll just take some eight quarter and I'll throw it on my, I'll cut it in half, throw it on my CNC, pocket it out, shape it, and then uh, flock the interior, which we do. And, and, um, and then, uh, and then uh, you know, I'll sell it but I had no idea what I was really committing myself to, which is wood movement and being able to get material and then having different uh, woods respond differently to the same production cuts uh, with your CNC. And it's funny because I had no idea at the time. Now it's like just secondhand to me. Like I, you know, I, I would never design stuff the way that I did. Uh, so uh, now this, uh, let's see if I can show you I mean, it doesn't really look different, but this, now this is a box that would be, um, okay, uh, that's actually more an example of me learning how to use my video software. But uh, uh, this box is actually uh, like, uh, okay, that's just gonna drive me crazy. Sorry guys, I gotta go to something that's not moving. There we go. <coughs> but um, so uh, this box, it looks like it's just a single piece, but it's actually, Kind of frame and panel construction and then the top is a solid piece that's only about a quarter inch thick and i use the cnc to get uh, the um the edge of the top as it tapers down pretty much just meets perfectly with the side which is actually four separate pieces and then the inside of the of the boxes are, is all plywood because plywood is more stable than wood and then for the lids which has very little actual material i uh embed this uh, piece of aluminum, which is how I finally solved my couple of years long problem of trying to get the wood to stay stable. Um, so now the boxes are rock solid. I haven't had a single box cup or warp in a year. And, um, and you probably would get stopped at security if you took it on a plane. <laughs> so um, give, give me an example of, of what it is that you learned uh, in going into production compared to doing one-offs. Uh, the amount of time it takes to do, like the, the number of steps, the amount of human intervention, the, here's an example, uh, the pockets are, uh, in order to accept the flock more easily, the pockets are all uh, radiused at the bottom. And so once you start radiusing the bottom of a pocket inside, now you've got a sanding problem because 
and you can do it. It just takes a long time. So the next thing you know, you're looking for all these jigs and ways to kind of streamline and speed up the, the meticulous challenge of, of sanding. Um, but that is, uh, you know, that's just one of the things, like if I redesigned it, I would design a box that wasn't um, put together with a lid and base with magnets. I wouldn't have the pockets that are flocked. That would have some kind of an insert that you can make separately and just throw it in there. Um, um, and then there's challenges like some of the aesthetic things that I really love. Like if you look at the, um, if you look at the edges here, uh, and I, if I was prepared for this, I would have had better examples, but hopefully you can use your imagination. So this is all just engraved. And I, my problem is as an artist, as a, per, you know, as a creative person, I think that's beautiful. So I'm unwilling to give it up in order to streamline and speed up the process. So that adds a couple hours of machining time for every eight box lids or eight box bases I make. Um, I will say that uh, I wouldn't change the past few years of the, ex I mean, I've learned so much uh, this is just a couple of things I've thrown out are just the tip of the iceberg, but I've learned so much about um, about CNC and, and and trying to have a small business and about my own my own nature. Like I'm not a person who's good at repetitive tasks. And I, I used to dream of being a woodworker when I was a, when I was a consultant. And I thought I'd rather spend eight hours sanding today than eight hours doing this crap. But I was absolutely wrong. <laughs> so, um, but, which is fine, right? To know yourself is uh, the only way to yep. kind of like learn how to live, you know, exactly. move forward. But yep. um, so I will show you the thing I'm I'm now doing, which is I'm trying to figure out how to. Uh, so one of the things I learned is I want to make things that are super fast and easy and and rewarding to make that cost nothing in materials and nothing to ship. So uh, I've been I've been hanging around with uh, my little rotary axis that I've been getting going and uh, and making pens. And these are just some of my first tries. Um, and I'm loving it. I mean, there's just so much, I'm having so much fun. And, you know, Tracy, the stuff you do is so refined and beautiful. I hope to, I aspire to, or I guess I decarve to be that way one day, but. Uh, <laughs> well, they, I like this. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of I've fun. Seen, and, I've seen the other pens that you were uh, uh, creating that you, you used a little lathe, right? Yeah. So the, the, all the pens we've created in the past several years were all because we had to have something to do while we were waiting for the CNC machine to be done. <laughs> so uh -huh. we were just turning pens all day. Well, they look really nice. Well, thanks. Yeah, I, I have to say, like, I, I feel like I have a pretty good aesthetic, or at least I look at a lot of other pens that are being sold on Etsy, and I just feel like there's a lack of shape creativity. Like, they use nice materials, they finish them well, but, but they're always, like, kind of a, they're, like, just I don't know. I'm, I, I don't. I'm you're looking. Boring. You're looking for character. Character and in, in the shape specifically. And so I've always like really tried hard to create nice shapes. And I really love that I can sit on my computer and I can come up with a shape and then it just happens on the CNC. Yeah. So absolutely. But, now, um, I I have another question, Scott, because since you you all of a sudden disappeared for so long. Uh, yeah. The lids of your boxes you're, that, that you're not doing right now, but you know, you were putting artwork on those things. Right. And you originally, if I was correct, you started out V carving those. Yeah. And then did you switch over to laser? Yeah, it's so much easier to deal with. It's so much faster. Um, you can get much higher resolution depending on what you're engraving. And I've learned how to, um, use the laser to engrave with depth and also to the laser if you defocus it and then you go over the engraving a second time or even sometimes depending on the wood you can just do it once you can get a very dark burn so it's almost like you've infilled your v carve uh with uh with a stain or a finish and you don't need, so you don't so it just really speeds up the process um and it's it's far more reliable and i found that so the boxes that we make are ridiculously labor intensive only to be, you know, getting engraved at the very end. And uh, so it's right, a little bit- Right, because they were custom. People got to pick the engraving that they wanted for a particular box. Right, and uh, so my greatest fear was to like, so engraving with the, with a, with a router. Um, I mean, we were pretty good at it, we do it, but there were limits to what we would even tackle because we didn't want to try and tackle something that was beyond our ability to do on the, on, with the router. Um, and I just was unwilling to ruin a box. I mean, I, I've ruined a few, you know, and right. uh, um, yeah. 
So, but, so the but, laser takes all the pressure off. But if you remember at the very beginning, you were having all of these Instagrams and putting out uh, little videos of the process that you were doing. Yeah. And I was really amazed of the way that you were taking when you were doing the V-carb, um, you were able to finish that and then you used a, um, some coloring to accent that engraving Right. And then wiping it back off so the rest of the wood wasn't contaminated. Just, just the engraving stood out like with, with black. Yeah. Paint. I don't know exactly what you did because obviously you weren't going to explain in detail. And I wanted to get you in one of the meetings so I could ask you what you did and how you did it. But oh, uh, you, well, <laughs> it's a good thing you asked because I can I can answer that in twelve seconds. Which is we would just put. Uh, a mask of like uh, transfer paper over the box before we'd engrave it. So then we'd engrave through that, which I'm sure everybody's done plenty. And then we would just use a stain on top of that. The problem with that was lighter colored woods, so it would still sometimes bleed through. Right. Um, and through the side, like capillary action through the side of the wood. And uh, that was actually the, we did that once and we ruined a box and uh, well, we, we saved the box, but it was a lot thinner after we saved it. And, uh, <laughs> uh, and after that, I said, you know what, I'm just going to try to use the laser. And we, we, we started learning how to use the laser to do that. So. Um, yeah. And the best thing about the laser is, so my boxes all have magnets on the, the lid and the base, and they're right. opposite polar polarity, so they just clamp together. So I made a jig for the laser that has the, the magnets appropriately placed. And then I just take the lid and I just smack it down on this on this jig, and the, the magnets align. So the uh it's like it it's not it, i can't even describe how great it is and we're all we're all cnc users and hold down is like the hard challenge to like overcome every time and to just place the uh, box on top of a piece of mdf and have it just like lock into place and then hit go is just the greatest feeling in the world so. and i have to say now for those of you that that are new that haven't met scott when we were having in-person uh, meetings the jigs that he has come up with are just absolutely interesting. I think that was one of the biggest things that that he was able to um, show us. Yeah, I, I like I like the jigs. They're fun to make. Yeah, um, and I'm happy to share anytime anybody needs help with a jig or wants to give me advice, which is more likely. So, Scott, uh, how many of the boxes did you end up making? Uh, a little bit over 300 that I delivered and then 450 or 500 that I had to make. Wow. <laughs> so, um, but I now have, I actually made a whole bunch and I have a stock of about a hundred in inventory that are either done or just need final sanding. Um, and it's a good feeling to have boxes ready to go, you know, if people want to buy them. So. Great. Thank you. Sure. Uh, anybody okay. else have anything to, uh, I don't know if you're going to be able to top this one, uh, but uh, <laughs> anybody want to give it a shot? No, I can't top it, but I'll show you what I'm doing. Um, I just finished a project using uh, cabinet sense to develop a couple of um, bookcases. Let me show you that. Um, here. Wait a minute. What is going to come like that? Uh, that's good. Ah, uh, see, here we go. Let's get it on this screen. Okay. So, can you see this? Uh, yeah. Yes. Drawing yep. of um, <coughs> the cases. So I have a client who has a fireplace. They wanted bookcases on each side, they're different widths, and then a big solid wood top all the way across and some crown molding. Um, so each one of these, well, I used 
cabinet sense to create a bookcase. It happens to be two different instances of it, one 55 inches wide and one 59 inches wide. And it generated all the DXF files for recarve. <clears throat> Let me go to the next, okay, next one. And you say you did that in SketchUp? Yes, in SketchUp with this cabinet sense extension. Uh huh. So here it is uh, cutting the end pieces, which you see it's drilling all these shelf pin holes. And those are something you want to exactly match one side with the other. And then I've got dados down at the bottom here for the deck base piece and dados for the top and dados for the back. And put all that together. Um, in addition, I cut <coughs> solid wood pieces for the face frame. So it, it provides DXF files for the face frame and all went together. Um, yeah, here's a couple other pieces. Um, so I put it all together and it matched the drawing and I delivered the cabinets today. The client's gonna paint them, then I'm gonna put this big heavy top on it. Uh, th that has nothing to do with CNC. But uh, great. You know, anyway, um, that's that's what I'm doing right now. I think I'll unstop my sharing. Okay. Uh, thank you, Vince. Uh, at some point, maybe what we can do if uh, if people are interested in uh, doing cabinets, uh, maybe what we could do is have a session, and uh, maybe this could be the presentation on how to use SketchUp with the cabinet sense yeah. to create just a whole cabinet and just kind of show how easy it might be and also to show that uh, maybe you can uh, shortcut making the cabinets which hopefully will uh, generate a little more uh, cash in somebody's pocket uh, <laughs> and do it a little more efficiently and effectively and quicker to um, and more exact to make more money. What I would like to say about it is that even one-offs, this is much faster. Yeah. Uh, the combination of the software and the CNC. Yeah. Is so much more precise. It fits together like it's supposed to. You don't have to fuss around. And I just really appreciate that. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, uh, maybe at some point uh, we can have that discussion and uh, I've got a good friend of mine that uh, he's a cabinet maker from Southern Oregon, and he has a big, uh, big five by 12 CNC machine. And uh, basically he's been doing it for a long time. And his machine was, I don't know, two or $300,000. But he said that basically that kept him in business uh, over especially building crunches and so forth. Uh, and he thinks that if he had not had that, he'd be out of business. So um, I'd like to, uh, to go ahead. Uh, Rich uh, Bader, our Zoom leader, he's uh, got that on his screen. Uh, basically, he and a couple of other, a couple of us other people are uh, involved with the Guild project, or really it's, it's the Guild uh, program that we're putting together. And he has a little presentation on what we're doing and so forth. And uh, let's, uh, let's go ahead and let Rich tell us a bit about what's going on in the Guild as far as CNC. So Rich, why don't you take it away? Thanks. <clears throat> uh, some of you may know that the Guild has had a CNC machine in the closet for the last couple of years. Four. Four years. 
at least. Uh, at least. Craig uh, was the one responsible for getting that machine donated the machine to the guild. I'll let him tell that story and there's a little bit more coming, but it's been a source of frustration that the machine has been sitting there idle with nothing to do. And uh, in part because of the new annex, which many of you, hopefully you all know that we've, the guild has taken over the, the dojo, the space across the parking lot from where the shop is now. And that's what the capital campaign is for, to help create that. Yeah, question? No? Uh, and uh, so they've been laying out the floor space, trying to figure out what to do with all that. It's the B2, it was called the B2 space for a while, and now its new name is the studio, and it's going to be primarily focused on education. The, 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 there's been a huge number of new members that have been joining the guild. Uh, there's over a thousand members now, and many of them are looking to get educated about how to do woodworking and core training and green cards and all that stuff. So the facility expansion is one of the catalysts behind, well, maybe now's the time to figure out what to do with the machine. So four of us have gotten together, uh, myself and Craig and Dave Smith and Vince. And uh, just because we kind of knew each other and were motivated to make this thing happen, and we started to engage with, as I call them, the powers that be at the Guild to figure out what's it going to take to put together a program. And um, much of the focus has been on education and training. So if the Guild believes, rightfully so, that if we're going to put a machine like the CNC out on the floor, somebody ought to know how to use it and use it safely. And so over the last couple of months, the four of us have been working on a program largely in conjunction with the education leadership group, which is chaired by Gary Weaver. And he's been introducing us to folks uh, like Steve Poland and others that are working on the floor plan for the B2 space, the studio, to try to figure out what we're doing. And uh, a, a week or so ago, we had the first face-to-face -face meeting of the so-called CNC leadership group with the education leadership group. Uh, there have been a couple of draft documents that have floated around about what it is that we intend to do. And we've kind of come to consensus. So the, the outline of the program is, to get started, is there will be two courses that will be taught. The first one's going to be called Intro to CNC. And it's going to be a, uh, I imagine it as a couple of hour class. It's going to educate people about what it is that a CNC machine is, all the different ways that you could use it in woodworking, uh, who might be interested in using it, who might not be interested in using it, and why you might want to use it in your woodworking stuff. And so we're starting to pull together materials to help uh, with that. Uh, Vince has already pulled together some examples that you might have seen last month on the, at the SIG about all the furniture building uh, uh, opportunities that he has. We're trying to come up with some less sophisticated stuff as well. But this will be, this is the teaser. This is the, this is pretty cool. Don't you want to use this stuff? Uh, the class will include a demonstration. So uh, assuming that we can, uh, that the machine is set up when we run the classes, which we imagine they will be at some point, uh, we'll demonstrate how to do a design in VCarve and then how to cut, the, how to cut that design on, a, on the machine to give people a feel for what that process is like. So that's the first class. Uh, assuming that people are interested and they want to do something, now you move from education to training. How, not what can you do, but how do you do it? And um, 
So we've put together a class called the Intro to CNC Operations and Safety. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to Vince, if he doesn't mind. Uh, as he mentioned earlier in the meeting, Vince has taught what I think of as the pilot class for this. So, Vince, tell us a little bit about what you did. Oh, okay. I went through the class with a couple of members. I'm using my machine. And we, I predefined a couple of designs. Uh, just a plaque, a little sign with the student's name and a couple of different varieties. So I'll, I'll, go, get, I'll go get mine. I'll be right back. I demonstrated the machine. I pointed out safety issues. I made a list of things you need to do in operating the machine. I demonstrated it. Then we had each of the students run through it and cut their own design. And uh, it worked out, I think, pretty well. And uh, Rich was one of them. He's uh, running off to cat to get his. Uh... Yeah, so there was no programming. Everything was pre-programmed. The uh, G code was already made. And we took that out of the picture. It's mainly how do you turn on the machine and run it safely. And if you're lucky, what you get looks like this. Yeah, so student's name with some kind of a plaque outline. Yeah, so Rich actually made that himself. He ran the machine himself, yeah. yeah. So that's, that's what we would plan to do for basic introduction to operating the machine and operating it safely, so. So I have, I have a question, okay? Obviously for the class and everything else, because we're just getting started, people or the, or the guild or somebody's gonna buy some tools, you know, a 60 degree VBIT, uh, end mill and so on, a, a few tools. But if we get to where this is like any other shop tool or shop machine to where someone wants to book some time on the machine, is it going to be one of these things where they need to provide their own um, tools or will we just have tools out there that uh, can get broken or dull or whatever? And then if you look at the collection of tools they have for the router, the guild, the drawer that's underneath the, uh, the, the table router, you don't want to use any of them. They've been donated. They, who knows what happened? They're not sharp. I think, and we, we need to discuss this at more length, but I think we want to encourage people to acquire the bits that they need for the job that they want to do and keep them. Yeah. Rather than put them into the general population. Yeah. Uh, this is this is something that we are going to be discussing, and uh, several of the guild. Uh, Officials, whatever you want to mention, whatever you want to call them. Uh, certainly, Dave is also interested in in this, uh, among other things. What's the uh, expenditure from the guild? Like, what does it look like? And certainly, a lot of the accessories that go along with the CNC is something that we have to determine: is it best to have somebody bring in their own tools? and have the risk of them not being very good, uh, you know, cheap Chinese steel or whatever that's likely to break, or is it better to provide a, a basic set? So again, it's, it's not something that has been decided at all. Uh, it is definitely something that uh, is one of many, many things that we need to, uh, to figure out what the best uh, way to do it is. So uh, thanks for asking, uh, Tracy. And, and it's a really, really good point. Yeah. And one of the biggest items besides the tools is 
the clamping methods because there's so many different clamping methods and part of it's depending on the machine on what it has available for you to do and then um do we have some clamps there and, and a lot of clamps we can actually make with the machine but uh yeah let me make a comment on this um we're not going to let the machine be just plain open shop we're going to bid it, let it be run under a mentor. So if you schedule a machine, there's a mentor you're going to be working with. If that mentor were me, I'd ask, what do you want to do? I've got a whole bunch of bits at home. I could bring in some bits. Um, I have clamping suggestions and so forth. So you wouldn't be entirely on your own. Right. I think that Dave has, uh, has his method that has worked really well for him. And uh, he just, uh, he doesn't worry about the clamps and all that. All he worries about is what size screw he needs to <laughs> screw it. Well, to that's the, uh, that's to one the different type board. of method, you know. <laughs> when, I, when I first got my CNC, I was thinking elaborate. I put in a vacuum system and I made a box and, and all kinds of things. And it worked well. Um, but... I got a little lazy over time and I said, well, maybe mechanical clamps will hook up faster and uh, tried that. I used those lever type clamps and so forth. Finally got down to the point where the spoil board is the cheapest thing on there really. I mean, it's just a piece of MDF and you can put a lot of screws in the spoil board if you sand it when you're finished. Uh, you know, you, you replace the spoil board once a month, once every three months, however, you know, it is. It doesn't cost very much compared to a vacuum system. Very effective. And I finally settled on just doing that. Um, I can screw it down and get to work right away, line it up easily. It just worked for me. <clears throat> okay, why don't you continue? So, so uh... So back to the program. So now we've had an education class and we've gotten people excited. <clears throat> we've had a training class. Uh, and th th just to put a fine point on it, there's a lot of things that I like about Vince's approach. It didn't take very long. Uh, it demystified what a CNC machine is. We came up with the procedures that you need to <clears throat> start up the machine and home the machine and workspace con uh, coordinate systems and touch offs and all that stuff and hold downs and at the end of the class you end you end up with a finished piece of work uh, which I think is very important because woodworkers are hands-on right we want to make stuff and so we want to minimize how much time we spend on the blah 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 and blah 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 and maximize the amount of time that people are actually doing things and Vince's class, I think, is a great example of, of how to do that. Once uh, folks have gone through the training class, we want them to have access to the machine, as Tracy was talking about. <clears throat> and this is the element of the program that still needs some work. Um, everyone, in the guild, everyone that we've spoken to in the guild is committed to having members be able to get their hands on the machine. The question is under what circumstances. Um, typically today, you know, you go into the machine room, there's an essay that's there that, that can help you out a little bit. It's unclear about how many of the essays are going to be ready, willing, and able to step up to do the CNC work. In the meanwhile, the education committee has been putting together a program that we don't understand very well, but it's called this mentorship program. And it's an opportunity to have one-on-one -on -one time with an experienced woodworker who can help you train and get more experience on the machine until you're more ready to fly solo. And we believe that the next step, that the way that members will have access to the CNC machine is under this kind of program. Exactly what it means to become a mentor, we don't know exactly how many hours we'll be able to schedule to make that happen we don't know uh, so there's still a bunch of unknowns about this there's actually a meeting that's been scheduled with the education committee uh, in another week or so for us to try to understand what all these issues are and and how we can address them to to make all of that happen 
Well, you know, Rich, and the other thing is that when we talk CNC, it's kind of like 50-50. There's the operation of the machine, but there's you got to go do all the artwork and the, and the G code and everything else. And so there's a lot of computer that, that, uh, learning that people would have to do and the mentor would have to be able to sit down with them. That, uh, so that, that's correct. Uh, so we've, in, in order to simplify things in the near term, um, the, the, we have these two classes that we're going to try to get off the ground. They don't include design. So in the education class, we'll do a demonstration of what it means to do a design in VCARV. We'll do a sign and cut the sign so people can see what it's like. In Vince's class, as he mentioned, the instructor will be doing the design work and basically hand a design to the student to let them cut. We hope that in the class, there'll be the opportunity for the student to do some customization. I wouldn't want a sign that says Tracy Ann on it as much as one that says Rich Bader. So we'll at least be able to do that level of customization, hopefully a little bit more. The design classes, what we hope to do over the next few months is provide a curated collection of YouTube videos and articles to allow students to do some of their own design. And if they do their own design and then come to the mentor with a, with a, with a, a design, we're going to ask them to bring in the job sheet so that the mentor can at least see how big is this cut, how deep is this cut, what's your hold down strategy for this, what tools are you using, and be able to verify that the design that's been done is actually going to be able to safely be cut on that machine. Whether we have mentors that understand the design process that can help with design, we don't know yet. We'll see right. who's willing to be mentors. But at least initially, the expectation is that either the student is going to use the design that's prepared by the instructor, or they're going to be self-taught in how to do the design, and then they'll bring their own design and G-code to the mentor program and be able to cut, the, cut their work on the machine. So I have a comment or a suggestion or maybe a question, Please, I'm not sure absolutely. which. That's why we're doing this. We want the feedback. So it seems to me that the goal of the education, you know, is ultimately to empower people to utilize the the, the guild resource, which is the CNC machine. Yeah. So I wonder if we could include, you know, in, we were, I, I really am glad you're referring to the design element, but it seems to me that what we really want is to set guidelines or expectations for a project plan, which is, okay, you know, because the design, that's people, have, people will be inspired by what they want to do and they'll figure out the design. But how do you transform that design to the safe cutting and under, you know, on the machine? And if I was a mentor, I would want someone to come to me and I would want them to have already thought about, obviously, their design, which is what they're trying to accomplish, with, you know, but what's the material selection? What have they prepared by, like, what is their, what, what, you know, what bits do they want to use? And if they need help with that, great, but they should be thinking about that. And then time it's gonna take, you know, they all, uh, you know, and then the actual cut plan, hold down plan. I would love it if we could be teaching that in the courses because that's really what will ena enable people to become independent. And uh, Scott, we, we are in absolute agreement with you and we are all hankering to be able to do this so we we are um we're trying to converge on what we think we have the resources to do and what it is that the guild is ready willing and able to support mm -hmm. uh, so there's already um contention about how much reason contention isn't the chat isn't the proper word perhaps, but there's issues about scheduling. How many classes can you run? How many classes can the guild manage? How many classes can they, how much time are we going to have to dedicate? So there's all this other stuff that other classes are trying to do as well. Mm -hmm. And and as far as the CNC stuff, uh, I, I'm frankly delighted at the number of people that have come to this session. Uh, and I'm hoping that we'll be able to attract more that are going to be interested in becoming mentors and instructors and course developers. Um, over the over the last few weeks, I've been spending hours a day 
preparing the plans and putting some infrastructure in place and all of that stuff, it turns out there's a lot of work to make this stuff happen. And so we want to have some initial success. We want to have some initial enthusiasm. And if we determine that there's a lot of people that want to attend these classes and do this stuff, hopefully there's going to be more resources that will be allocated to, to help make that happen. In the meanwhile, we think these two classes and getting the machine deployed so that we can actually use it is a big win. And, and with the new the fitting up of the studio going to be happening over the next few months, there's a lot of work going on to make that happen. But what's the next thing that we want to do? Design. Uh, other, otherwise, uh, who wants to cut your signs? You know, we want to cut somebody else's work. I want to cut my own stuff. Vince? So let, let me make a comment. You, you know, Rich, I came up with the third course, which is an introduction to VCARD. We could combine that with uh, Scott's suggestion about when you're making tool paths, you're obviously using tools mm -hmm. and you're going to think about hold downs. So have you completely trashed the idea of that third course or is that sometime in the future? I, 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 I have not completely trashed the idea. I love the idea. It, it's, it's more a question of priorities and how much can we do how quickly. And so the, the, just to understand, the, we in the CNC group, some of us, have been frustrated about the fact that the guild hasn't picked up the ball on the CNC machine that's been in the closet and done something with it. On the other hand, there's folks at the guild that believe that they've gone to the CNC SIG and said, hey, help us make this stuff happen. And not a lot has happened. So we're in a, a mode now where with the new studio space, I have seen a floor plan for the first time today that actually includes floor space for a CNC machine. Nice. Yeah. The plan that we saw a month ago, two months ago, didn't have one in there. <laughs> so uh, there are elements of the guild that are now responding to the efforts that they see. But I can tell you that we're under a little bit of scrutiny for delivering on what it is that we say that we're going to do. And at this point, I'm at least in the mode of I'd rather undercommit and over deliver or at least deliver on what it is that we're saying. And if that starts to roll and we've got more resources and we find more interest, man, let, let's let's bring it on. Cool. So I have one more uh, suggestion with that in mind. Um, I know that there's, you know, I don't know if there are in Portland, but certainly in Seattle and other cities, they have these uh, community workshops that are, or maker spaces, and they have CNC machines. It'd be really interesting to contact them and go, how do you guys do this? And then see if they'll even send their materials. I bet they'd be happy to share, and which might just give us a, a jump start without us having to put any effort really in at all to at least understand what might be coming next. Yep. Dave Smith, care to comment? I think that's a great suggestion. Um, you know, we've we've talked. We certainly understand that these first two courses is not the end of everything, and we envisioned a, a series to follow. Um, and these are excellent suggestions as to how we might populate that series. And I like the idea of see if there's a maker space here in Portland that we can go visit and talk to them. Why don't you talk a little bit about what you saw in Austin in terms of get their getting their CNC program together? I'm sorry. What did you tell a little bit about the experience you had in Austin about getting their CNC program going? Drawing a complete blank. Did didn't you live in Austin, Dave? Weren't you working for a guild down there? Didn't you help oh, them right. set up their see, CNC program? All right. You're talking about the uh, Sun City. Sun City, Wood. yeah. There you go, Sun City. That thing. All right. I was trying. To, what is he talking about? Yeah. So, Sun City has a fabulous wood shop, and it's probably three times the size of ours. It has all the great equipment. Uh, it's got a wonderful dust system. It's pristine. I mean, you. You wouldn't mind going in there and eating a meal that's that clean. And they've got a thousand members just like we do. Well, somebody donated a CNC. In fact, it was just like 
like the one that has been donated to us as a legacy explorer. And immediately the, the, the active participation in the shop divided into, remember when we were kids and we went to dances, the girls all on one side and the boys all on the other. This was the opponents of CNC and the opponents of, PNC, of CNC. And we had to bring all that together. And we, we went through the same process. How do we train them? How do we get them interested in it? And that sort of thing. Um, and so I ended up teaching some classes and doing some demonstrations and so forth. But they were committed to making the thing happen. And it, it took a while, but all of a sudden now, you can't get time on the CNC. In the meantime, and I'm probably speaking out of turn, one of the difficulties we had was um, getting people to, to, to go from, you know, chisel in hand to XY coordinates. And so we also introduced a laser because that kind of an XY kind of thing, a lot less destructive if it goes haywire than CNC. And people saw the, the advantages of that for labeling and things. And all of a sudden that translated over to the CNC. Now they got two CNCs and they're fully booked. So what we did there was much less structured, much less, much less organized than what Rich is, is proposing here. Uh, I believe that this will be more successful than that was. That took eight months to get going. Um, Yeah. Yep. So uh, we're all fans of CNC, obviously, and I'm expecting that once the machine is in place and we have the opportunity to use it, we will help evangelize the use of the machine. People, uh, from what I've heard from Dave's experience, is once it's up and running, people come over to it and want to know what the hell's going on. Mm -hmm. And we'll have the opportunity to explain that and, and hopefully provide opportunities for them to be able to take advantage of it as well. Uh, let me ask you a question. One of the things, you know, is in your introduction uh, class, you know, you'll have people come in. Are you going to want any, uh, you know, pieces of art or something that you can show people this is something that you can make? Because I've got pieces I could donate. Absolutely. Uh, I think that one of the um, one of the visions that I have for the class is that we have a number of folks that are that present uh, and they and j just like we do here with a little bit of show and tell. I, I believe that the CNC is the most versatile machine in the shop. And from Vince's woodworking to the art that you make to the games that Dave makes to the boxes and pens that Scott makes and all the other stuff the signs that Craig makes, the, the, the acrylic work that he does. There's so many examples of, of, of work that, that we have done uh, as, a, as, as CNCers. One of those things is going to inspire somebody to say, hey, I'd like to give that a try. Yep. And while uh, we want to initially focus on our core of CNC users, the folks that are on the list, the folks that are here at the meeting, we many of us want to evangelize the use of CNC beyond it. I want to get the hand carvers involved because we can do rough cuts for them and get a lot of the tedium out of the way so that they can get down to the fun stuff. That, that we can carve a dozen rough cuts for somebody that wants to teach a class that's focused on the detail that we can be Craig's idea of being involved in the toy drive and community builds and raise some money for the guild. There's so many different ways to use it, but we've got to establish the core programs first. We've got to get safety involved. We've got to get the, the guild members to start using the machine and, 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 and start incorporating it into their work. And so we're hoping that these are the first steps that are going to help make that happen. And, and once that happens, I'm hoping that demand skyrockets and we've got a dozen classes that run, each of them focused on a different specialty, 
uh, the design stuff or toy builds or sign builds, uh, the carving stuff, all furniture making, joinery work. I mean, there's so many different classes that we'll have the opportunity to teach. But again, we, we got to start with some 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 basic stuff first and then and then grow it from there. And, and there's something else, and because I've complained about this for several months, and last month I thought Ed and everybody said it was going to happen. We're not in the newsletter. We're not in the weekly uh, uh, listing. We're not on the event calendar. Yes. We don't exist yes. right now in the guild. Yes. Uh, well, we're working to change that. Um, we've been invited to uh, create an article for the newsletter. Uh, uh, Gary Weber uh, just asked me to do that. I intend to follow up and raise the visibility. We will be doing a better job at structuring these monthly SIG meetings. The next one, the intention is to have it be a hybrid meeting. We'll meet at the Guild and we'll be able to host uh, the Zoom callers for those that can't come down. So we are trying to become more active as a SIG. Uh, right, so but I'd like to see us on the event calendar and see us, you know, in the newsletter as, yes. you know, the women's SIG is in there every month and, yes. uh, and so on. So, yes. so we're, we're putting the infrastructure in place. I, I have to tell you, it took me, I spent three hours today to learn how to kick off this meeting. Ah, so, very good. I'm glad I brought that up. Yeah, you know, like last month where I didn't, I, my credentials didn't work. Right. So I think some of the people just uh, thought it wasn't happening. So, you know, there's a number of things that, yes, need to be done. And one of the things about this whole program or process is that uh, at the Guild, uh, we're talking with people who are basically traditional woodworkers. You know, like uh, Dave was saying, you know, we've got the, the, the boys on one side, the girls are, you know, the, the ones that want to do CNC on one side and the other naysayers. And we, we've got to get it. And this is just, this is the phase one. So I totally agree with you that we need to make sure that we get onto the calendar, that we do get uh, some visibility. Um, a month or the last meeting that I attend, the, the basic or the, the uh, guild monthly meeting, I got up and, and gave a, a, I don't know, it was like a two minute talk about CNC and, you know, it, didn't seem to, uh, to generate a whole bunch of interest. You know, it may have just been that I didn't do a very good job and that's entirely possible. But what we're trying to do is put together a program with expertise from a variety of different people to come up with the, the a successful pilot program, I guess maybe. Well, I did see in the newsletter, this latest newsletter, there was two sentences in the, in the one in, at the beginning that said the CNC group is starting to put something together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So well, we will follow up with that. I, 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 I want to add a little bit of color about what, whether there is opponents or, or not about CNC. I, I'm sure that there are some folks, traditional folks, that aren't interested in it. Uh, that's fine. I, I know a guy named Randy Young. He, he worked at Intel for a lot of years. He was a chip designer. He was, I mean, the quintessential geek. And he says he'll never have a computer in his shop. He goes into his <laughs> shop to get away from computers. So I, I completely understand that. But I, I, just a, a few days ago, I dropped in on the SIGS board meeting. Um, I just wanted to see how it operated and what kind of stuff they talked about. And I asked Ed for a couple of minutes just to give the board an update on what it is that we were doing. I heard nothing but support. Nothing but support. I heard some questions. Are we coordinated? Do we know what we're doing? Are we, is the right hand talking to the left hand? And Gary Weber was there as uh, he was a tremendous advocate for what it is that we're doing. 
He's the guy that's making sure that the machine has space in the studio. He's making sure that the, the curriculum is being approved and is moving ahead. Abu was there. Everybody knows Abu. He's responsible for the machine room. And he worked with Vince to make sure that we had safety requirements in place. The safety committee has already approved the safety guidelines that Vince put together for using the CNC machine. So one piece at a time, we are finding that the guild is responding positively to what it is that we're doing. They agree with the classes. They're giving us space. The safety committee's on board. Uh, the newsletter is there. The promotional opportunities are there. The opportunity to do articles are there. It's, it, it's beginning to happen. I'm, I'm very encouraged by uh, how I have seen, as I call them, the powers that be respond to all of this. And in addition to all that, we got a very pleasant surprise in terms of a machine. Craig, can you tell us a little more about what happened there? Sure. Basically, the machine that uh, the Guild has had in the closet forever, or seems like forever, is a two foot by two foot uh, machine. It's uh, router based. It has, just has a, a router. Uh, the machine itself uh, is one that I bought probably nine or 10 years ago and then traded in on my Maverick, which is the three by five with a turning center. Uh, one of the things we thought about is we, maybe we should upgrade this uh, router-based machine to a spindle. Uh, one of the issues with the router is that it's, it's not that it won't go fast enough, it's that it won't go slow enough. Uh, I think it goes down to 16,000 RPM, which in my mind is about as fast as you want to turn a router bit on the CNC. And a lot of times, uh, particularly like for me with acrylic, I have to set my, my router at maybe seven, 8,000 RPM or I'll just melt the plastic. So anyway, the bottom line is that we thought, let's go back and see what it would take to upgrade this to a spindle. Well, Legacy, the manufacturer, they talked it over and talked it over. And I wondered if it was even something that they were considering. Well, I got a call from them and the, the, uh, the guy is a support guy. He comes out and he says, wow, I, I got great news for you. And then he proceeded to tell me all the reasons that we couldn't upgrade this machine to a spindle. I thought, what's going on? Where is the good news? <laughs> anyway, then he said that uh, the president of Legacy had suggested that they have a Maverick, which is just basically like my machine, like Vince's machine, that uh, they would be willing to donate that machine to the guild. And all that we would have to do at the guild end is provide the shipping to get it from Salt Lake City to Portland. So I was, then I was real excited. I shared that with uh, Rich and also with, uh, with Dave Smith. And we all got pretty excited that, hey, we're getting, instead of a, a small two foot by two foot machine, we're getting the, a really capable uh, machine that can do an awful lot of things. So at this point, we're talking about instead of implementing with the small router-based machine, maybe uh, the guild can sell that one to offset the cost of the shipping. And we will have a significant machine for the guild. So I was pretty excited. And I know that uh, I looked at that same uh, floor plan for uh, no, we need a building, bigger building B. A bigger well, but but the footprint was uh, basically for the bigger machine. So oh, I'm pretty gosh. excited about that. Uh, you know, there's still some discussion about what is the best alternative, and you know, there's a bunch of issues. Uh, you know, if we have a guild machine, 
uh, we certainly cannot have a bunch, uh, we can't have uh, somebody come in and want to use an ACORN controller, somebody else want to use a uh, open source, another somebody else want to use something else. If, we, if we're going to uh, train or have our uh, mentors, we got to have all of them know how to run the machine. And with the legacy, the option is Mach 3. Uh, so it's just one like of the that. things, one of the things that we have to define along with, you know, a bunch of other stuff, but, you know, we, we have to answer these questions and uh, there's quite a few of them, but in my opinion, uh, like Rich has mentioned, we, we want to get the initial program implemented and that's including the couple introductory classes, then we want to make sure that we have the space in there that we get power to the machine, the dust collection, all of the little the mechanics of the machine. But I think once we get it in there and we put a couple of projects that have been done on the machine or near the machine, like you had suggested, Tracy, that uh, people will come in and look at that and say, wow, I could do this. Well, all right, let's uh, now let's take those initial classes and then we'll have some demand built up for, for the guild to put together the, uh, the design classes, the class, you know, all the rest of the, the pieces to this puzzle. We'll put together some training classes where Maybe Dave Smith uh, teaches a class on how to design uh, the ultimate cribbage board or game board or somebody else. Uh, maybe Vince talks about, this is how you build a box and how you can uh, do all of the dovetail joints on the machine automatically. You know, th there's just a whole lot of things that can be done, but initially, We've got to put together this program and make sure it succeeds. Yep. And, you know, we got to use the KIFs, you know, just we got to keep it simple or it's just not going to happen. So anyway, that's sorry. I got great. I'll get off my soapbox. Oh, so, so you, sh you should know the guild is committed to getting the larger machine. Done. Yeah. Done. Uh, yeah. and, and we had said, we'll help pay for it. Don't don't worry. We got money. We got budget. We can do yeah. this. And everybody knows it's a seventeen thousand dollar machine. We're going to get for sixteen hundred bucks. Uh, so the fact that Craig was able to pull this deal off has already gotten visibility at the board, and they they know a good deal when they hear one. So there's uh, so we are going to be in, in the situation where we're going to have two machines, and we don't necessarily have to sell the other one. We're going to see. So there are resources that will uh, that are being made available, and I think having a three by five machine in the studio is just awesome, just awesome. With a turning center. Yes, and, vertical and a vertical vice that can do joinery. Yep. So anyway, yeah, it's it is exciting. So. Uh, We've got some other uh, other things on, on the agenda, but what I'm hoping that you're beginning to do is think about how you might participate. Uh, there's a lot of work to be done. Um, uh, Vince has taken ownership of putting together the operations and safety class. We're going to need more instructors for that. Uh, I'm trying to pull together some stuff for the intro to CNC class. I'm going to need a lot of help with that, and we're going to need instructors for that. We have no idea how much demand there's going to be for the class. We're trying to spread the word, and we'll use the newsletters and some other vehicles to try to get a sense for how many people are really interested in, in doing this. We're going to need mentors down the road, and I don't, we don't know yet exactly what the mentorship program is, but you can imagine that you're going to schedule yourself a couple of three hours down at the guild and you'll be available there uh, to help uh, support some folks that want to use the machine and they'll be able to schedule time to go in and, and work with you. That's, I think, the general idea. 
Um, and as that develops and we have more people that are experienced and mentors, uh, hopefully we'll be able to incorporate it into the, the normal flow, maintenance flow, shop attendant flow, all of the rest of the stuff. And it's just, just another tool in the shop. But again, we, we're going to have to get started. And my hope is that it's these core members, the, the, you folks that are showing up and, and the ones that haven't been able to make the meeting but are, that are on the list that are going to be able to help us with all of this. Um, we do have a couple of documents that are floating around that we'd be happy to share with you. One of them is, we called it a status update, but it's basically jotting down what it is that we've been talking about here. The education program, the training program, the member access aspect, and then getting the machine deployed. All of those uh, areas require some work. And they all sound like simple concepts until you start digging in and you've realized it takes three hours to figure out how to set up a Zoom call. Uh, each is, so each of these activities, uh, it, there's, there's a learning curve associated with them with regards to the CNC SIG. But I could also tell you that uh, there isn't an email that I send out asking for help that doesn't get unanswered in 24 hours. So the, the folks that we've met at the, at the guild that I have had the opportunity to interact with have been very supportive and very helpful. Uh, Jim Garrison on IT and Bland has been helpful at getting the, the meeting set up and Gary Weber has just been terrific at helping to pull together the education program and he's been working with Doug Drake and Steve Poland in terms of the footprint for the studio and making sure the space is there and the power is there. Now we need 220 instead of 110 and the dust collection and the footprint and the blah blah blah. Uh, but nonetheless, it's 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 beginning to happen. Uh, that's all I got. We had uh, we have a couple people who showed up uh, uh, on the screen. Uh, one is uh, Steve McGowan. Uh, Steve, uh, could you introduce yourself and uh, give us a little. Uh, quick little background on what you're doing. We're, we're almost out of time. It's, uh, we got 10 minutes. So I just wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, we all know who has uh, joined the meeting. So Steve, just tell um, us a little about what you uh, are doing these days. Um, well, I, um, I have a CNC router. It's a very small one, a friend of mine built. And um, I've used it for uh, several projects. And, um, the uh, but what happened was is that I ended up picking up a 3D printer and I've sort of gone off on that tangent mostly, and so uh, I uh, uh, been um, uh, however uh, uh, I've been sort of uh, learning more and more about you know, I, I know a lot about CNC and about computers and stuff like that and so um, uh, at work we have a, a CNC mill. And I've been working on that. And actually it's sort of an interesting thing because it's um, I'm trying to machine stuff with a 0.02 millimeter drill and a, point, a one millimeter mill, you know, a square mill, a square bit. And um, the uh, apparently all the rules change when you start trying to do metal with, you know, tools that small. So you have to um, uh, change all the speeds and feeds because they uh, they they bend so easily and break so easily. So anyway, it's quantum uh, physics, isn't it? What? It becomes quantum physics, right? <laughs> and anyway, so I've been um, uh, uh, you know sort of uh, you know I'm I'm very familiar with the CNC router and and um, uh, I I not an expert on Mach three, but I certainly make it do whatever I needed to do. And then um, also I've been uh, uh, I have a, uh, a couple of uh, 3D printers, and now I have this uh, Tormac mill at work that I own or are responsible for. So, in any case, uh, and then this is this is the kind of stuff that I make on my 3D printer. And basically, you know, when you put a little torque on it, it actually you know starts ticking. And it's a model of a uh, tourbillon out of a million dollar watch. <laughs> Make a bunch of those things. So anyway, um, but um, 
and uh, I actually this one guy started making uh, one of my designs in uh, wood. And uh, it's been very interesting watching him go through that process. Now, uh, suddenly I'm like, well, maybe I can use my CNC router to, to make these things out of wood instead of out of plastic. So anyway, but that's what I do. Very cool. Thanks. Very cool. Uh, it, it, it hasn't escaped us, by the way, that there's a lot of commonality in the design process between CNC and 3D printing. Uh, similar tools, uh, one subtractive, one additive, um, but uh, at least the upfront work, a lot of the design work has a lot of commonality in it. Well, one thing about 3D printing is, is that it, it's, um, you know, it automatically handles all supports and th that kind of stuff. Plus, you know, you know, any kind of tooling that you need, it does that in the program. And then it's also, uh, you know, the process of um, generating the uh, tool paths, uh, whether it's on a mill or on a um, CNC router, um, you know, again, uh, much of that's been automated in the in, for three D printers, yeah. and so it's you know it's much less work with a three D printer to actually generate the tool path and be able to make make something. Yeah. Whereas uh, you know there's a much more planning that takes place with a, um, a, a CNC router or or a mill. Yeah. You know, basically, they're because they're additive or they're so subtractive rather. Yep. Anyway. So, Craig, I have yeah. a laser question. Well, is, we is probably have familiar? some laser people, but uh, is there go ahead. Are you familiar with an X-Tool D1 laser engraver? Yeah, they're pretty cool for the money. Is they that, have a new one out called the X-Tool D1 Pro, which is um, right. more robust and has a supposedly more laser power because they use and like more, two. And more money. <laughs> well, yeah, but. I, I mean, you might be able to upgrade just the laser itself. So what they've found is they can, they take two lasers and then they have them join their right. beams. Yeah, they yeah. get more power. So I'm okay. looking at the different different wattages and uh, do I need a, do I need a turning station or not? You know, because the way they got their packages all done. But I just want to know if anybody was familiar with it and what they thought, so. Okay. Um, I know that uh, Steve, and that that's a diode laser right correct yeah uh steve i know that uh you have one that actually you've loaned me that i need to get back to you but uh uh i don't know have you really used that uh the diode laser uh i i have and uh it's it's good for you know basically uh wood burning it, it really doesn't cut very deep because it's only mine's only two and a half watts uh you know the uh you know, generally need 40 watts. And then also um, the difference is the blue lasers won't cut any plastic, whereas the um, infrared do. So yeah, it has uh, to have a solid surface. Well, there's, some, there's something else that, um, so I have actually the X-Tool M1, which is like a Kickstarter where they, they um, it's similar to the D1, but you, you have to use their software and it's not quite as powerful, but it also incorporates like a cricket cutter into the same, gantry machine you know assembly so you can like, oh. laser part of it and cut out some i don't know i haven't quite gotten there yet but one i have played around with the laser though and just the difference between a co2 laser which you're going to get better cuts and a diode laser my experience so far is the diode laser is much uh much finer uh dot pitch like you can you can actually much more easily laser engrave almost photorealistic uh on wood where the where at least my Chinese CO2 laser, you just can't get it. You know, they just, I mean, you'd have to go maybe buy another lens and I, I haven't even figured it out yet, but um, it really lends itself to fine, fine engraving. And it's pretty cheap for what you get, that's mm -hmm. my experience. At, at work, we have a Fusion Systems lab, um, FSL lab, um, Muse, it's a brand new one. And um, it's uh, it's got an incredibly fine, uh, you know, uh, beam on it. You know, it's really pretty impressive. And so I haven't used it much, but uh, uh, they decided to make a, a machine shop at work. And then the guy who was going to do it left the company. And so now I own all that stuff. So I see. have a, a, you know, a Muse uh, laser cutter and uh, this uh, Tormac 440 mil. And um, we also have uh, two uh, uh, or three Form Labs printers and one Prusa printer and we're looking at ordering another Prusa. 
So anyway, but I basically run the two, the, the printer lab and the, the um, machine shop now for our, our company. It's just a small company. I mean, you know, there's only hundred people that work there, but anyway, uh, I mean, it's, you know, I don't get, you know, kind of day job is company. writing code, so. I kind of want to work, work at your company, Steve. What? <laughs> uh, <laughs> to, to play with the, uh, the toys? Just to hang out with you. Yeah, that sounds fun. Yeah. Well, we, we got some great toys there, honest to God. I mean, yeah. they, they have this anechoic chamber, this audio chamber, and it's this room that's probably like 15 by 15 by 15. And it's got three foot deep cones all around, including on the floor, because you walk on a trampoline. And um, we, uh, you, know, you know, we just got this thing all set up. And so uh, we were listening to music in it. And it's so weird because there's no reflections of anything. So if you're between the speakers, you hear the stereo and that, that, you know, the singer is right between your eyes and you move off like this and it just goes like that and either way. And if someone walks into the room ahead of you, anechoic. what? That's a, that's a standard three meter anechoic. Well, it, it is, it is pretty impressive. And then if, if someone walk, uh, I was with another guy who was walking in the room in front of me and he was talking to me as he's walking in and as he walked in the room, his voice disappeared because there was no reflection. <laughs> And so, like, I, I, like Paul, you got to turn around and talk to me. I can't hear you anymore. So anyway, <laughs> but um, it's uh, and so we got to, you know, um, RF chambers and all these other things there too. So I, I just made. Um, excuse me. Uh, well, it's called Skyworks. Um, we make silicon that goes into noise canceling headphones, and we also make stuff that goes into earbuds. We make the. Uh, you know, the silicon that goes into earbuds, including the amplifiers and stuff. So anyway, but um, so we do all sorts of acoustic stuff well, and Bluetooth. That, and... It, that sounds that sounds like uh, fun for me because I, I, I work for Tektronix designing oscilloscopes, but I've done embedded pretty much all my career. Well, we're hiring. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm a manager, I'm hiring too. Oh, okay. <laughs> Crying anyway, right? <laughs> well, yeah. it's, it's it's sort of um, uh, we've been doing well, so they got a good budget, and so they decided they wanted to make the shop, and so I, I stuck up my hand, and uh, they let me do it. So I was been, um, I'm sort of enjoying myself. I was going to retire, but now I'm like, well, I'll stick it out a little longer so I can play with these toys and decide whether I, what I want to do. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So okay. Yeah. Uh, I I I want to close out this the section about the see it, the guild program by saying that my personal stretch goal is to have a pilot intro to CNC class for the next SIG meeting. So uh, put it on your calendar. What is it? The second Thursday, third Thursday? What is this? Second. The second, second Thursday. Second Thursday of the month. We will get some announcements out in advance of the meeting. Yay! <laughs> yeah. uh, and we'll see if we can make it. But my goal is to be able to put it together and be able to present at least some elements of the class uh, to the SIG so that we can get some feedback about whether we're on the right track or not. Yeah. And and one of the things we are also trying to do is to uh, establish uh, a, a room <laughs> that uh, or, you know, a, a, a in-person meeting where those of us who can make it into the uh, the shop, basically right. in Multnomah Village, can meet in person. And uh, also, we are hoping to get uh, you know, set up so that uh, we can have people zoom in as well. Right. So that's that's part of the the program. And you know, hopefully, yep. we can get it done by for next the next meeting. Right. Uh, we don't know if we'll have the machine set up, so I don't know if we'll be able to do the demonstration part of the class. Well, uh, you but... know, truthfully, that we can we we do have the ability to roll the machine in if right. we if we have to, right. and it does it does run. I made sure that it is running <laughs> at this point, so uh, you know we can do a demo on right. on the machine. That'd be great. So, That'd be yeah. great. Okay. Uh, before anything we else. Off, I... I just want to say hi to Richard Micellos. I don't know if he said anything today before I logged in. Yeah, yeah, I told him about the um, uh, the vanity I built with your help. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't have the, well, next time I'll, I'll make sure I have some pictures that I can show. Oh, okay, Great. very good. So you, you should also know that one of the resources we have for being the CNC SIG is, is the group, the announcements that we make. There is a Google group now called CNC SIG, and you have the opportunity to post to that SIG, uh, to post to that board if you've got some news or you find an article that you think is interesting or you just want to share something or you have a question. It's, a, it's an opportunity for us to keep this meeting going in the in the 29 or 30 days before the next one uh raising topics i mean it, it's for us to do whatever we want to do to have discussion uh we're also looking at, at getting together some storage space so we can put documents and photos and whatever else we might want to share up there as well uh but it's it's a it's a great resource we'll get some more information out about how to do it but you saw the last invitation that <laughs> Uh, uh, at, and the, and the, the additional information that I posted about the meeting that came through on that. Uh, if you don't know how to use Google groups and so forth, we'll get some information out to you, but that, but that resource is available to us now. Okay. Uh, just, just curious, are they going to do, are you, uh, does the guild own a, uh, laser cutter or no? No, not no. that I'm aware of. No. Okay. No. I don't, I don't believe so. That would be a whole nother, uh, yeah. <laughs> whole maybe, nother ball game. Maybe we'll start with a cricket. There you go. That's, <laughs> and yeah, we'll, 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 we'll get, get the, we'll get the drag knife. Yeah, we'll get your, yeah, there you go. <laughs> so I'm going to get going. It was really, to, uh, it was really great to, cricket. I got to get going. It was really great to yeah. see everybody. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Take so care. Much. Thanks Scott. for coming, Scott. Scott thanks for your uh, participation. We yeah. really appreciate it. So. Hopefully we'll drop see too. everybody next week. Take care. Yeah. Next one. All right. Okay. Bye. Have All a good right. night. Bye. Good night. Okay. Good night.